Well, good morning, everyone. Psalm 126 is a great follow-up to what we've been talking about the last several days. Uh, psalm 126 is really a psalm about um, Israel being released from captivity. Uh, remember the captivity that they were in. Uh, they were overthrown because God told them if they turned their back on him, that he would he would allow their enemies to overtake them. And that's exactly what happened. Their enemies overtook them. And and it was because of their failure to honor and obey the Lord. It's because they stopped worshiping God and started worshiping other gods, doing other things, living life by their own rules. And God said, okay, I'm not going to protect you anymore. And the enemies overtook them. Uh, and so Psalm 126 is kind of a psalm where they're uh, declaring the greatness of God because even in our the punishment for our wrongdoing or God's correction coming down, they had hope for a day when they would be delivered. When God's punishment or God, the duration of their consequence was over, they would be able to sense the Lord again. And so let me just read this to you. So those of you out there that are really struggling with some issues right now and maybe not sure when God's ever going to let you get back to uh, a life that you, you would love to live because of the consequences of your mistakes. I'm not talking about just general life here. We're talking about consequences of mistakes, uh, things that we do that are they're honestly against the Lord, whether we knew it or didn't know it, and we're under the consequence of that. Uh, this is a psalm that should be an encouragement to you because there is an end to consequence if we'll turn to the Lord. And that's the key, if we'll turn to the Lord. Psalm 126 says this, says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Uh, when uh, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with, la with singing. Uh, and they said, Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us whereof we are glad. And so <clears throat> the psalmist is saying even the, the lost people will be able to see the Lord doing great things for us one day. Uh, when we pass that, uh, that uh, threshold of consequence back into the grace of the Lord, uh, we will see great things happen. The psalm goes on in verse number four. It says, Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They that goeth forth and, and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him. And so there's the, the thought of, of plenty, the, the, a life of, of forward progress, uh, a life that is blessed coming back in. And so we've talked about hard times that are avoidable, unavoidable. These are some of the hard times that come that are completely avoidable. They are absolutely uh, us turning our back on the Lord and having the, the Lord's protection just not be there. Um, and so we actually take the full brunt of our own mistakes and consequences come flowing in. And so I want to encourage you this morning. Uh, you are a turn and a patient waiting away from the Lord's blessing rushing back into your life. And so if you've made some mistakes and, you're heavy, and the burden of the consequences is heavy, walk with God in the consequences and he will at the end of the consequences lift you up. And so we can't demand that he lift the consequences because these are things that we deserve. Uh, we, we, we owe this to ourselves to be under consequence because we chose not to follow the Lord. And so I want to encourage you with this. Walk with him. Don't get angry with him. Walk with him. And he will guide you out of your own consequences and then lift you up. And so I hope that's an encouragement to anyone listening this morning. And I hope that your Friday is awesome and that your weekend is great. Don't forget, trunk or treat tomorrow night at the church property, the main parking lot uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. And then Sunday morning, we're outside again. Uh, our, our service is at 9 o'clock. We're trying to get a handle on the time change. In fact, don't forget that. Before you go to bed on Saturday night, change your clock uh, back one hour. Get that extra hour of sleep. See you at uh, services at 9 a.m. at the Journey Baptist Church. I hope that you are having a great morning and I hope that your day is off to a great start.